My name is Paul Epstein. I'm a medical doctor, associate director of the Center for Health and the Global Environment at Harvard Medical School. Our center is devoted to looking at the health consequences of environmental change and all of the inputs to the ocean that are degrading it. Changes in the wetlands, the over-nutrients, overfishing, and now climate change all have their expression in diseases that affect oysters and seabirds and mammals and eventually human beings. Just to focus on the climate issue for a moment, then I'll come back to some of the health consequences. Over the last 50 years, the oceans have absorbed a great deal of the global warming. Indeed, they have absorbed 22 times as much heat as has the atmosphere. And this means that the oceans, which sustain us through nourishment and food, through resources, as well as affect the weather on land, are all changing. And the temperature now and the extremes associated with warming are changing our weather, changing our health on land, as well as directly in coastal zones. So to return to some of the health consequences of this, we're seeing changes in fisheries and diseases that occur in fish. We're seeing harmful algal blooms that are the result of, again, overnutrients and removal of wetlands, which we call nature's kidneys that filter the nutrients. And it's these harmful algal blooms that contaminate shellfish and we eat it and get sick. They also affect entire estuaries, bays, and coastal zones, creating dead zones or low oxygen, hypoxic zones that affect all of the marine life. And we're seeing that now the number is over 300 around the globe of dead zones. In terms of what happens on land, the oceans are the driver of weather. So as oceans warm, the water cycle is accelerating. The water is warming, ice is melting, water vapor is rising. And all that means is that we have prolonged droughts in some areas, heavier rainfalls in other, and those are associated with health problems directly through effects on food production and agriculture, as well as floods, say, that leave conditions for clusters of mosquito-borne disease, rodent-borne disease, water-borne disease. So it's the destabilization of the ocean-driven weather patterns that have more to do with our health and productivity of agriculture, ultimately, than even the bugs that directly bite us.